Hello friends, welcome to Abhinav Goswami Law So friends, if you're liking my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, please provide your feedback for suggestions for future topics also. So guys, as far as this video is concerned, I'm going to discuss a very important case. The name of the case is D.O. Narayan versus State of U.P. This is the case of 1973. And as we have already discussed, the law regarding private defense, we have already discussed section 96 to section 106 in one of our videos of on Indian penal code lecture series. So this case becomes quite crucial for us at this point of time because it deals with the right of private defense of body. What is it, its extent and how it can be exercised and when it, when it commences and when it ceases to exist. So these are the few points that I'm going to cover in this video with the support of this case. So guys, if you have seen my video on private defenses, uh, then it is fine to continue with it. But if you have not done so, please go and watch that video first. So it will be better for you to get a better understanding of this uh, case. Otherwise, if you have a rough understanding of what a private defense of body means, then you can continue with the video also. So guys, uh, I will give you brief facts. Okay, so what happened in this case, there was a property dispute between parties okay, over a piece of land. So what happened that these persons who were the victims in this case, they formed a group okay, of five, six people. Okay, and they were getting with them lattice. And they started to proceed towards the disputed piece of land. And on that piece of land, these accused persons were already working. Okay, so when these people who had lattice in their hand, who were going to be victims in, others, in this case, when they reached that particular place, a fight ensued between both of the groups. So when these people were meeting the accused person with lattice and all, this accused person, Dio Narayan, took a spear out and attacked one of the uh, victims with that spear. And because of that injury, because of the graveness of that blow, that particular person died at this point. Okay, so this is the scenario. This is the background with which the case is coming before the Supreme Court. So how? So the basic essential question before the Supreme Court was whether the right that was whether the action that was uh, done by this accused person, whether he was exercising his right of private defense, whether his act of attacking this victim with a spear was it covered by the protection of Section 100 or not? Okay, so let me do a brief uh, uh, recap of our lecture uh, on uh, private defenses. So guys, as if you remember, Section 100 of our Indian Penal Code provides right of private right of private defense of body okay, extends to causing death. Okay, it provides for situation when in exercise of the right of private defense of body, a particular person even caused death of the other person. Okay, so in this uh, scenario, this case is like uh, apprehension of death, apprehension of previous hurt, attempts of rape. These are the situations that are covered. These are the graver apprehensions or injuries that are covered under Section 100. And as far as Section 102 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned, it provides when private right of private defense starts and when for how long the right of private defense continues. So the first question that came before the Supreme Court that when this accused person killed that person with a spear, spear in response to the injuries that were being given by the victim with a lattice, was it justified or not? So what the prosecution was trying to say was that as these victims were carrying only lattice, so this person could not have the apprehension of grievous hurt or of imminent death. So the right of private defense in this particular scenario did not extend to causing death, but the accused person by giving a severe blow by use of a spear in response to the lattice blow has exceeded his right of private defense and he should not be granted protection under Section 100. On the other hand, the defense is saying that it is the apprehension, the circumstances that all these victims came in a group with lattice in their hand were sufficient to cause an apprehension in the mind of these accused persons that today they may be killed or they may receive grievous hurt, which provided them the right to private defense even extent to cause them. So in, as far as this point was concerned, the Supreme Court held in this case that Supreme Court held that though the nature of the weapon is very crucial to determine what was the level of the apprehension in the mind of the person who is exercising the right of private defense, and also what is the nature of the weapon that is used by the accused person in exercising the right of private defense is also very important, but they are not the conclusive matters. It cannot be said in all cases with certainty that because of the nature of the weapon that was used, you have exceeded your right of private defense. Only because of the reason that these victims were carrying lattice, it did not give rise to uh, apprehension of death or grievous hurt will be wrong to say. The nature of weapon being lattice is not a conclusion matter. It all depends on other factors also. What is the nature of that lattice itself? What kind of it is? And how that lattice is being used by the victims? Are they using it on vital parts of the body? That is also very important. Okay. And what are the background scenario? What is the background circumstances? How many people have lattice in their end? And how, what is the manner in which they are attacking? So all this contributes towards this apprehension. So you can't say that just because these victims were holding lattice only, they did not give rise to apprehension of grievous hurt or apprehension of death. You can't say that. It all depends on what was the intention of these people and how they are going to use their weapons. Okay. So the first argument of the prosecution, as far as the nature of the weapon was concerned, was completely wrong. The second point that was raised by the prosecution was that the right of private defense commences. Okay, so in this case, the fight ensued. They were fighting with each other. They were, they were, they were intermingled with each other. So the, the dispute was, when did these uh, accused person get the right to, to kill that person, to exercise that right? When did it start in such a case where there is so much confusion? When these people have come with lattice and now they are fighting with each other, they have exchange of blows, exchange of lattice, then there is sudden use of spear. So when did that actually start? So in this, as far as this point was concerned, the Supreme Court clarified that as far as Article Section 102 of Indian Penal Code is concerned, it says that the right of private defense starts as soon as the apprehension of injury starts. And for arising apprehension, it is not necessary that the injury has to be caused. It is sufficient if they, the circumstances are such, which uh, show on to go on to show that the, that the accused person may be attacked at any particular time. They may be, they may be murdered, they may be, they may, uh, grievous heart may be caused to them. As soon as this apprehension arises, their right of private defense arises. It is not necessary that the lattice has to be used first, so as to give this accused person right of private defense. As soon as these people came with, uh, armed with all these lattice, it provided a sufficient apprehension, created a sufficient apprehension in the mind of these accused person, which provided them the right to exercise the right of private defense. Use of lattice was not a prior requirement for exercising that right. Okay? So these were two very crucial points that were clarified in this case by the Supreme Court in regards to the extent of the right of private defense. Okay, and as regards the nature of the weapons, what is the, what is the importance of the nature of the weapons in a particular case was to determine the gravity. Okay, and finally, the, when does the right of private defense commences and when does it end? Okay, so with this, I'm going to close this video. I hope you understood the case, though it was quite short. But mind you guys, whenever you are writing an answer on right of private defense, especially right of private defense of body, you need to mention this uh, case so, so that you can give the impression that you have a better understanding of far and beyond uh, the sections that are there. You have an understanding of what is the role of the nature of the weapons in the case. Okay, how that commencement and continuance of the right of private defense are applied practical. So you get an understanding of these things from this case. Okay, so keep this case in mind and you will score very good marks in your examination. So guys, I will be coming very soon with my next video. Until then, bye bye. Guys, if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. The link is provided just